Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you once again to our another year's program on local history. This is our first one for the fall, and we'll be back each month on the second Wednesday. Uh, this program was got together in a bit of a hurry, uh, and um, uh, I had to uh, change. I was going to uh, interview uh, Howard Mills, and uh, he wasn't able to be here this evening, and Don Cousins... Uh, very kindly consented to uh, be on the program again and prepared a group of slides on Port Stanley. Don, uh, I'm afraid I'm always taking advantage of you, and, uh, but really uh, you have the best collection of uh, pictures in the county. And uh, <clears throat> But on this program, none of these pictures are from that famous Cameron collection. No, these are all from my own collection. Are a lot of these old postcards? All of them, I think, are old postcards. Old postcards, and they haven't been shown before. Uh, I showed them once at Port Stanley at the Legion. Down there. I see. <clears throat> well, I hope the Legion's watching again tonight. Uh, what are you going to start with, Don? Well, we'll just start uh, with the older part of the village and work down to the beach and end right. up at the Stork Club, or what used to be the Stork Club. And what uh, year are we starting uh, about? Well, the, the postcards uh, uh, range from probably uh, 1900, although there are a few in the 1890s, mm -hmm. and uh, they go up to uh, pretty well the present day, yeah. a few of the present day postcards. Okay. The uh, best era of postcards was probably 1910 to 1915. Mm -hmm. Good uh, quality postcards in that. Well, what do you mean? Are they better than the quality of postcards today? Uh, by and large, they're much, much better. Why? Well, I don't know. Uh, most of the good postcards were uh, processed in Germany. And uh, they took a great deal of time, and they did a lot of artwork on the postcards. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't probably look exactly as a photograph uh, would look with, by an amateur, mm -hmm. but they've uh, dressed them up pretty nice, and they, and they look pretty good by today's standards. You do get yeah. the odd good one today, but mm -hmm. not very, not very yeah. much. I just should remind everybody watching that all of these were originally made from black and white photographs because uh, color photography really didn't come in until after the war. Yeah, that's right. And uh, so these were uh, colored. Hand colored. Hand colored and then uh, printed in Germany, a lot of them. And uh, Up to uh, the time of the First War. Uh -huh. They were mostly all German oh, I know. cards. Well, they rather specialized in photography and in printing uh, mm -hmm. in color. <clears throat> well, let's start. What's the first one you're going to show? Here? Well, the first one is uh, of the old church down there. Uh, built in 1845 on land that was donated by Colonel Bostwick mm -hmm. and uh, an Anglican church. It's uh, in a very excellent state of repair today. Uh, they just celebrated their 135th anniversary down there. And uh, we missed you, George. I understand yeah. you were married in that church. I was, yes, uh, 1948. thought you might go back once in a while. To well, I do. I do. I should go back. We, I was down there. We had a lovely time. The lieutenant governor was there. And, uh, it was just a lovely time. Uh, but, that church, uh, actually, Bostwick gave the land for that church about 1826. Yeah, much and earlier. it was a uh, uh, burial ground, uh, I suppose, even earlier than that. Maybe. Yes, I think so. Uh, he so came there, uh, I think, around 1812. Well, it's hard to decide. He, he fought in the War of 1812 to 14, and then some people say he came to Port Stanley in 1817. It's hard to... Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm not down. sure of that date. I'm not either. I don't uh, know, but it was he, after the war, of, after 1814, that he came, although uh, Talbot gave him the land, uh, 600 acres, in 1804. That early? Yeah. That mm -hmm. early. Yeah. He certainly owned most of Port Stanley yeah. that we know it today, and... Uh, I believe he was asking quite a price for the lots, and yeah. it kind of impeded the progress of the village. Well, I think so. He, uh, he wanted 100 pounds, I think, for some of the lots uh, that were, uh, where there was a possibility of having a mill yeah. as the creek went up there. That's a lot of money in those days. Oh, yes, yes. Terribly. But it is a beautiful large. church, isn't it? Oh, it is. A yeah. very pretty church. Yeah. Now, this is the uh, same church, a uh, little different view, a little later fence around it there. It's uh, been changed. It's been filled in in the front of it today yeah. so that it has, the grounds have changed. This is the Presbyterian Church. Yeah, what's Just the down date of that, Don? Uh, 1854. Yeah, I it was had, erected. that's, uh, 
What I have. 1854, you're right. No. Yeah, sure. Are you checking me up now, are you, George? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was built originally as a congregational church, uh -huh. and it succeeded in uh, two or three things in between, and then it became the Presbyterian Church. It, too, is a very pretty church. Yes. It's rather uh, uh, forgotten. People uh, know the uh, Anglican Church down there, but they don't see this pretty little church. Uh, down south of the Anglican Church on the other side of the street, yep. but it's a very pretty. The architecture is uh, rather yep. quaint. Was it always church. on that site? Oh, I think so. Yes, I believe it was always there. It's maybe been modified somewhat, but uh, still pretty much the yep. same church as it was. At That's that an time. early Presbyterian church for Algon County, is it not? Well, it, was, it started as a congregational church. Yeah. I'm not. It, it became a Presbyterian church, I think, in the late 70s. Oh, I see. The late 70s. Uh, across the street, this is the United Church. Now, I don't have a date on this. I showed these slides to the, or this particular slide to the uh, United Church people in Port Stanley, and I asked them the date the church was built, and they didn't know. And I haven't uh, looked it up since. I'm sure we could find it without any mm -hmm. real problem, but uh, it well, was. It's a pretty utilitarian <coughs> looking church oh, from yes, the outside, it but it's nice inside, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is a nice church. Yeah. It's. Uh, more recent than the other two. I, think, I believe it was built in uh, around the turn of the century. Uh, this is down at the main intersection, looking up the Schoolhouse Hill, uh, the road up to Orchard Beach mm -hmm. and Hillcrest, and up that way. It's changed quite a bit since this was taken. That uh, particular postcard is dated 1909, so I would imagine that the uh, picture was probably taken some few years before that. <clears throat> uh, you, can, you can see where we are, can you? Yes, sir. I know where we are. Uh, yeah. The um, <clears throat> um, if, if You can't see the old school on that, can you? It's well, hidden by those it, trees, I guess. Yes, it is. It's just in behind those trees there. Uh, right where that fencing is in the immediate foreground would be where mm -hmm. the bank is today. Oh, I see. Yeah. That, we're, uh, we're standing probably right where the, the pyramid the famous pyramid at the intersection there, oh, yeah. uh, looking north mm -hmm. on that picture. <clears throat> uh, this is up on Hillcrest. It's a view on Hillcrest at Hillcrest Inn. Of course, this has changed uh, considerably since well, that Well, uh, Don, finished. tell me something. That uh, lookout uh, on Hillcrest, uh, there was also a similar lookout uh, up at the Fraser House. Yes, there was. Uh, uh, and now, uh, in 1885, there's a publication of uh, that thing um, uh, in a Pictures magazine. Canada. Yeah, Picturesque Canada. Now, is it that one or the Fraser House? No, one? it's the Fraser, Fraser House. Fraser House one. one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and it was gone before this picture would have been taken yeah. up there. Yeah. I don't know much about that lookout. I don't uh, really. Now, this is Hillcrest in in later years, mm -hmm. uh, as it looked, and. Uh, this would be taken, I think, from the south, looking north, the back of the Hillcrest yeah. Inn. Uh, the, you know, be, it, that was uh, <clears throat> one of the few small inns we ever had around this area that was like an English inn with maybe yes, 10 or 12 rooms and uh, a nice dining room and a, uh, a nice saloon, I suppose, in the early oh, days. Oh, it, yeah. it was different. It was yes. completely different. Yeah from anything that we've got around here, and certainly of, in its day it was a different place. Mm -hmm. People uh, that would never think of going into an ordinary hotel would frequent the Hillcrest yep. Inn, mm -hmm. at least go in there once in a while. It burned in 1964, yep. and uh, a tragic thing that it had to happen. It was so popular with American people and mm -hmm. uh, as wedding receptions and, and yep. weddings too. Several yeah, people I, there were a lot of uh, social functions went on there, and of course, when uh, in its palmy days, when Mr. Ship ran it, yes, uh, it was really an outstanding hostelry, I think. Yes, Mrs. Ship still is down at Port Stanley is she really? in extended care, is she really? living yeah. down there. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember it <clears throat> in those times. I remember it more when the Hooks ran it. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the uh, Reg Hook and his wife ran it. Quite well. Oh, yes. They did a, a fine job, and she was a good cook there, yeah. too. It's too bad that it's... There's another view of it. Those people on the lawn there? On yes, the front? there, yeah. 
I hope the uh, it transmission... It looks bigger in those pictures as, than I remember it somehow. Oh, well, you were just looking on the main level, and you weren't looking up when you went into it. <laughs> well, maybe, Don. You could I hardly know. wait to get in. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know every Friday night it was just packed. You had to walk yeah. about a quarter of a mile to get to it. it was oh, just... I know, yeah. It must have been terrible for the people <laughs> who lived up there because there were cars yes. parked the right rack around the bend. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. terrible. It was worth the walk. Yeah. Now, this is the uh, so-called pyramid that the monument down there at uh, mm -hmm. Port Stanley. And we're looking south now, down Main Street. And on the right, past the monument, is the uh, Hotel Loney at that time. And it's now the Clifton Hotel, mm -hmm. still going strong. That's the oldest hotel that's still left in Port, in Port Stanley. The only one, I guess. Yeah. yeah. No, the Lakeside. The Watts right. The Lakeside. The lakeside. At yeah. one time, uh, within the last 20 years, there were five liquor outlets in Port Stanley. Were there? Yeah. You mean beer outlets? Uh, well, beer or liquor yeah. outlets. The, uh, the Clifton, the Lakeside, the uh, Elgin House, which was on the corner of Cavell Boulevard, uh, the Hillcrest Inn, and the Poodle Dog. They were all going at one time. Now there are only two there. That, uh... It's a hard village to make a living in, in a hotel or a restaurant, isn't it? Well, it's a two-month deal. Yeah. yeah. Summer, the summer two months is great, but the rest of the year you have to uh, almost starve. Uh, this is a picture of the traction line. I hope the transmission of these is better than the way we can see them, because I can hardly see that. It's yeah. uh, a picture of the traction line. Uh, the traction ran from London to Port Stanley, and it followed the highway, uh, went through Lambeth and Talbotville, and through the main street of St. Thomas, and then down mm -hmm. uh, through the countryside yeah. to Union, and then it picked up the highway again. Is uh, that in front? That's not the old station. No, that's it's in front of the, another building. Yeah, this is the the, corner, the main intersection, the building oh, yeah. on the the west southwest corner. Well, that's still the there. Yeah, it's still there. Uh, Mrs. Martin uh, that's started it. a nice little that's tea it. room and antique shop. That's that's where this is. No. Uh, the cars first came in in 1906 into Port Stanley. The traction no. cars, and they ran until 19 uh, 18 or 19, I think it was. 1918, yeah. And they, uh, the LMPS pretty well spelled the end of the traction line. It was a much faster yeah. way to get to port. Uh, this is a picture of the Clifton, or the Loney House at that time. And uh, although it's changed quite a bit and been added too, if you look up at the roof line, it's still the same as it. Yeah, it has those gables, doesn't yeah, it? That, still, uh, still the dormers. Same. This is quite a nice picture, I think. Yes. Uh, I wonder who was, uh, what dates that picture, roughly? Well, the, the hotel was built in 1898. Yeah. And uh, this would be 1900 to 1905 yeah. in that time. Loney didn't run it too long. No. Bob Coffey uh, yeah, ran it for a while. Yeah, the Coffey family ran yeah. it for a while, I know. Yeah, went through a succession of owners yeah. there for a while. Uh, before the Loney house was built, this... Uh, Hotel was built in 1870, the Bat Hotel, and it went until 1898 when it burned down. Just where was that, Don? Yeah. Right on the same location as the Clifton. Same location. Same yeah. location as the Clifton, yeah. Now, Bat uh, name rings a bell because uh, he was a member of the Port Stanley Marines, and he was also a butcher, I think, was the he? Bat family, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he was a captain. I don't know whether he was a, a captain. You mean a, a boat captain? Yeah, I he think was. so. I think he was, yeah. There uh, were several bats, but they were in the militia, and then one of them was a butcher, I know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether you can see it or not, but above the name, the Bat Hotel, is the Masonic insignia oh. up there in the picture there, and that's where the Masonic Lodge was being held at that time. Oh, I see. In the yeah. upper portion of that building. Hmm. Uh, this is further down Main Street in front of the old town hall. The town hall was on the east side, uh, of Main Street. There's no uh, part of it left, although there was the steps of it there until the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Everything's gone now. It was taken down, or at least it was uh, disbanded by the village about 1926 or 27 mm -hmm. when the present uh, hall was built up on Bridge Street. Now, uh, where was this old hall again? It was on Main Street, down past the Clifton, yeah. on the east side. Uh, about opposite where Hal Sorrenti is in oh, Lover's yeah. Fish House there. Yeah. 
this is uh, an extension of the traction line down there, and the fishermen would load the fish. These are boxes of fish yeah. onto these flat cars and take them to St. Thomas, and from St. Thomas they would go east and west to, yeah. into yeah. the states. Yeah. It's quite a lucrative business for yeah. quite a while there. Believe it or not, I don't know whether I've got the key, but there are, is, is a key to this picture with the names of all those people. I think somebody even told me the name of that dog that was sitting there in the front. <laughs> there. Uh, there's a, a better picture of the town hall. Is Stanley. that the same kind of uh, very dingus same. on the top that they have in the St. Thomas very town same. hall? I think they must have been made by the same person, I think. Maybe, eh? Yeah, the, the, I believe the parts, that hall was erected in 1877. Yeah, and ours was about 1854 in St. Thomas, wasn't it? 1850. 50. Yeah. And it was on the corner of Stanley Street and uh, Talbot. Talbot. Yeah. Now, this is a view from behind, from Hillcrest, overlooking the harbor, looking in a northwesterly direction. The largest building you can see in the foreground there is the town hall. And if you can look closely, you can see that little uh, cupola on top there. And it overlooks uh, the harbor. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of writing on this card. I didn't like to take the writing off. The particular postcard came from uh, Miss Marlatt. Oh, yeah. And it shows where her, their cottage, the Marlatt cottage was, up behind the station there. So I left it on there. It's a very good and a very clear picture. Uh, this one now is from the opposite direction of the last one. This one was taken from Hillcrest looking yeah. northwest, and this one is looking southeast from behind the station, overlooking the harbor, the old bridge that went across, <clears throat> the old iron bridge, over to a point there that was known locally as Clubhouse Hill. And there was a clubhouse up there and uh, a lot of dances and so forth. Uh, older people like Ernie Glover and Jack Brumpton remember well going to mm -hmm. Clubhouse Hill and having dances and that. It was also known as Liberty Hill. There's a, an advertisement in a, an 1898 pamphlet and it's of Liberty Hill. Uh, this is another view of the same location, a uh, little different angle, but over in the background there you can see Liberty Hill or Clubhouse Hill, and you can see the bridge, the steel bridge mm -hmm. going across. Now, can you identify either of those white buildings on the uh, left side of the creek there? The left side of the creek? Yeah. No, not really, I can't. I probably could with a little help, but I, I really can't. When, when was that iron bridge uh, taken down? You remember? There's a 1938. 38. Yeah. yeah, the new bridge was opened in 39. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a pretty good picture, but that's from behind the station. The station's in the right foreground there. Yeah, it came down and the present bridge was put up. That's when they had that uh, terrible accident. Accident. Yeah. The coffer dam broke and so many people were killed down. Eight people were drowned. <clears throat> Tell me something, with that old bridge, uh, anybody that had a sailboat, uh, can you go back to that bridge? I'm trying to. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, no, uh, anybody that had a sailboat, uh, they couldn't get under that, eh? No, I guess there was no uh, docking facilities, I guess, for sailboats up... Uh... Uh, I suppose then they all must have had the dock uh, uh, between that and the harbor mouth, eh? I guess they must have. You see, the yacht club at that time was down on the on the beach. Oh, I see. It was. It wasn't moved up until about wartime. Oh, I see. But the yacht club was moved up. Mm -hmm. There couldn't have been because they couldn't get past that bridge. No. Are those uh, uh, sort of sailboats? You can see some masts uh, on the yeah, left side. Yeah, they kind of look at it. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they must be. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I think. Fishing boats. Yeah. yeah. Now, this is the railway station. Yeah, that's the station. We're looking south from the station. Now, this picture, I know, was taken in 1900. Mm -hmm. And uh, the card was didn't come out till 10 years later. But there's a steam locomotive coming. You can see the green elevator behind the smoke of the yeah. locomotive there. Now, if you notice that building on the uh, opposite side of the street, on George Street, we're, now we're on the, the uh, west side of the bridge now. Yeah. If you notice that building, 
on that large building. If that's the same building in this picture, on the left-hand side of this picture. We're going down Bridge, uh, not Bridge Street, George Street now, no. towards William Street, which goes down to the, the beach. Now, I don't know all these buildings in there, but I know that the original LNPS cafeteria was located in about here. And I think this picture was about 1908 mm -hmm. that this was taken. Uh, there's another view of the same location, but showing the north side of the street. And that's the old Franklin house that stood on the location. Well, of, uh, when did it burn? Well, I don't know. Is it did I burn. think it was sometime before 1917, anyway. Well, all the hotels either burned or were dismantled. It's funny how they all burned in 1917 and 18, right after Prohibition came in. <laughs> just a coincidence, I guess, but that's and what you're, you're imputing terrible motives to people. Well, like that. it's just a strange thing that there were a lot of hotels burned in 1917 and 1918. And that was the Franklin Hotel. Now, just exactly where it was. Uh, well, if you know where the liquor store, yes. you, you might not know. You do? Yeah, I well, do. Mm -hmm. The liquor store in Port Stanley, it's on the same location as that. That's where the Franklin Hotel yeah. was. Yeah. Right yeah. That and location. it was quite a nice hotel, too, I understand. Mm -hmm. quite, quite a well-run establishment. Now, this one uh, is the same location, but this time it's looking eastward towards the bridge. That's the bridge in the middle of the yeah, picture. Yeah. And the Franklin House is on the left side of the... No, none of those places on the right are still there. Not one of them, no. Uh, no well, the, the, the residence that's on the corner when you turn... It's still, yeah. It's, uh, it's the Mitchell still, House. The Mitchell, the Mitchell, Mitchell House, House is now, still Now, it there. was in that third, la second last picture, but you couldn't see it. I couldn't see it, but no, it was... Uh, no. it, it's in there. Believe it or not, Ernie Glover was telling me there was two taffy makers in that little block there, competing really? against each other at this time. Uh, Taffy Lore was one of them, and I forget what the other one was. What do you was. mean, coffee makers? Toffee. Toffee? Yeah. Oh, Taffy. Right. Yeah. Taffy. Yeah. Yeah, Paul Taffy. Yeah. He was telling me how the one, the one fellow had a, a certain uh, solution that he would put on his hands to pull the taffy, and the other fellow, boy, none of that stuff for me. I don't use that phony stuff. And he would spit on his hands <laughs> and pull the taffy. <laughs> Well, I got the, the sanitation laws were a lot different. Okay. He thought he was doing it the right way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, this one is looking uh, the same way eastward across the bridge, and that shows a picture of the bridge from the south side of it. The present bridge goes across on the south side of that bridge so that we're looking almost directly where the uh, present bridge goes. But that house that's shown on the far side of the bridge is... Uh, is that still around? Yeah, I think, I'm not sure whether it is or not. I think it is. I think it still is there. And the building on the far right of the picture is still there. That's the first uh, business block on the north oh, side yeah. there. It's yeah. still standing, I know. <clears throat> uh, this is the, the present bridge. This is the opening in May 1939. Mm -hmm. uh, Mitch Hepburn was supposed to have opened the bridge and the plaque so states that he did. Yeah. But uh, in fact, he wasn't there. Mrs. Hepburn was there. And uh, T.B. McQuiston, who was Minister of Highways, actually did the, uh, officiated at the opening of the bridge. That was quite a remarkable uh, bridge uh, when it first came, yeah. when it was first yeah. opened. It was, uh, I remember as a kid, uh, just marveling. I was just, pr I'd pray that the thing would open up every time we'd get there. <laughs> yeah great site. Of course, it didn't open as many times then as it does today. Oh, no. It was near the happened. trip. I think, I think they opened up uh, once in the morning and once in the afternoon, maybe, oh, yeah. at that time. Uh, there's the fellow that was supposed to have opened the Port Stanley Bridge, Honorable Mitchell Hepburn. Well, he was a, he's quite a remarkable man. Oh, I guess he was. Yeah. About the most remarkable that came out of this uh, yeah. area, yeah. that's for sure. Now, that's a nice picture there. Now, that's this is a recent ca card. I got this card in the mail from Hal Sorrenti it, within the last five years. And this is one of the few recent cards that is really an attractive, clear, uh, well... Uh, uh, that's the, uh, what was the, Elg that old fish house is now the, what, the Elgin Electric? Yes, it is. Yeah. And uh, I, uh, it's, Hal Sorrenti lives in the upper portion oh, of that yeah. fish house. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. just a, 
a very attractive place. Yeah. You've never been there, George? You really should. Uh, yeah. No. It's, it's just really quite a place to be in. It's a huge place. You know, it's amazing how many... Uh, uh, Tugs are along there. That's right. And a yeah. lot of families still making a good living. So that fishing. picture was taken within the last five years. Uh -huh. Oh, it's still a thriving industry, I'm sure, yeah. at Port Stanley. And this is one in the 90s of the uh, harbor. Now, what's the, the harbor. tall elevator like building on the right? Well, that's just what it is, a grain elevator uh -huh. storage at the side there. Yeah. A lot of sailing ships in that uh, harbor there. Yeah. Uh, we're looking southward from the uh, bridge into the outer harbor. Well, that's a pretty picture. Yeah, this is a view of the village looking uh, north. Uh, this would be in the late 30s that this would have been taken, an aerial view. You can see the bridge in the middle there and looking up, going north along the creek. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty good picture. Uh, this is a view of the harbor from Hillcrest, looking over towards the amusement section of the village on the west side of the bridge. Uh, this is a view looking north along the east side of the harbor. Uh, you should be able to see the town hall in there, and you should be able to see the uh, Glover's Fish House and uh, also the Clifton Hotel is in that picture, although I can't really see it from here. The lights are so bright. Yeah. It, it's a good picture, about 1910 yeah. that this was taken. And that's the same view there. And you should get the uh, town hall too. A lot of tugs in, a lot of tugs. <laughs> Listen, I'm trying to find out how much time we have, Don. 30? Yeah, 30 minutes. All right, well, we're just halfway through. I, uh, <clears throat> every once in a while, I get a little edgy and wonder whether we're going to uh, get through all we have. Well, we don't have to get through them all. We, no, 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 no. we get through no, them, no. we do. If no, we no, don't, I know. Don't. Well, this is fine. I no. think we're about halfway through. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah, so we have 30 minutes left. Okay. All right, so we'll just take our time. Now, tell me about this picture that we... I already did. Yeah, but tell me again. <laughs> I was uh, so agitated I didn't hear it. Well, this is a view of the uh, harbor showing the east side, yeah. and we're looking north. Now, you should, in the middle of the picture, or just a little to the left of the middle, is the town hall. Oh, yeah. Uh, the old town hall yeah. there. And I think it, you should be able to see the Clifton Hotel, too, in it. I can't see it, but it's there. Yeah. The different style of tugs are older tugs there, yeah. but still quite a little bit of activity. Uh, these are some of the older boats, and I'm not too well versed on these. Frank Prather is the fellow that knows his boats down there. This is the Flora that uh, was probably in the 1890s. I believe this boat burned in the about 1904, and uh, although it was rebuilt too under a different name. Was well, this one boat. that went to Cleveland? Yes, this mm -hmm. is one of the boats that went to Cleveland. Just about all these boats mm -hmm. uh, went back and forth between Cleveland and Port Stanley. Uh, boats have been going back and forth between Cleveland and Port Stanley since the 1830s. The mid-1830s they started, yeah. and they went until, for over 100 years they were going, until about yeah. 19, yeah. until the wartime, they were still going. You know, a lot of people uh, forget, uh, I wonder if we just interrupt this one for a minute. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of people forget how early, uh, there used to be uh, boats run by the Ebert brothers from uh, uh, Chatham that went down the river from Chatham and then called it Port Stanley and called it Buffalo. Oh, yeah. And, oh, when, uh, when was this, George? This is about 18, 1840s, 1840. Oh, goodness. And uh, uh, there were quite a few services from Detroit to Buffalo to Port Stanley. And uh, Passenger? Uh, yes, mm -hmm, passenger and freight. And uh, Edward Ermatinger, when he was a member of Parliament in the 1840s, uh, used to take one of those boats and get to uh, Niagara or late, uh, Fort Erie, <clears throat> and uh, uh, then you'd uh, get a passage past the Niagara Falls, mm -hmm. and then you uh, picked up a boat and got across to York. Is that right? And it, well, it didn't take too long. It was a pretty fast time. Well, you see, that, that'd be before the railways came. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yes, yeah, that'd be the best way to go yeah. at that time, for sure. 
but uh, there certainly has been. Uh, we, what nobody has done is uh, sort of outlined all the boats that did sail. Uh, it, it'd be a tremendous job. It, yeah. So yeah. many of them did sail. Uh, Frank Prathro's done it uh, more than anybody else. Yes, in this yes, line. he has. He's done. Uh, he's put out <laughs> some very good books. I, I watch this. Uh, boat. This is another one, the Forest City. Yeah, we better wait until it's on the screen here. Ran around the turn of the century, yeah. and uh, it's a pretty good sized boat too. Now, is that a, uh, a a paddle wheeler, isn't it? Yes, it is. Side wheeler. Side yeah. wheeler. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Now, this is a little boat, a smaller boat called the Lakeside. Uh, this was about 1910. This boat was going across. And in the background, you can see the pier and the lighthouse there. Uh, just a small boat, but a rather sn snappy looking uh, boat. Uh, I don't know whether you can see it, but that's an advertisement for the lake side. Oh, yeah. And I believe the fee was 350 to go over there. And uh, it, well, it never you know, really uh, varied too much. The fee was never, to go over and back, was never more than $5 at any time, mm -hmm. uh, right up into the 30s. And, and you could take your car over for that yeah. sometimes. And it was a fairly cheap uh, and entertaining weekend to go to Cleveland. And, but more people took advantage of it from the American side, came over to the Canadian side. Many more people came over, three or four times. You know, about 10 years ago, somebody, you know how we get big ideas, somebody had the big idea that should put a great big eight-lane highway through the center of Cleveland and build a bridge across. Uh, some of the Ohio people felt that uh, if they had a bridge across, yeah, I don't see, you'd have to put it farther uh, uh, to the west, uh, use those islands and Pelee and so on, and then you'd cut off all that trip around the west end of Lake oh. Erie. I hope they never do it. I, uh, That's more ridiculous than building a bridge, a tunnel across the English Channel. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Good heavens. I never heard of that one. No, uh, that was mooted in, uh, in Ohio uh, oh. as a project. Never heard of that one. It, this is uh, the city of Cleveland. This ran... Uh, in the early part of the century, from about 1910 uh, to 1925, yeah. a very large boat. And a, a this fine one would boat. carry automobiles. And yes, it would. Yeah. <clears throat> now this is about the finest boat, and I think the, about the largest passenger boat that ever went on the from Cleveland to mm -hmm. Port Stanley. It was the Theodore Roosevelt. And that boat was still going in 1941. Was it? In the, not, in, not on Lake Erie, but up on Lake Superior. Well, Don, did you ever take a ride across the lake? No, they were gone before, yeah. maybe not before I was born, but before I remember. Yeah. I never remember a passenger boat coming into Port oh, Stanley. I never did either. My wife uh, has had that. Oh, she trip. would, yes. Yeah. Yes, she would. But uh, I never did either. And uh, why do you, uh, uh, what's happened to us in uh, our generation that, uh, we don't like boat rides anymore. I don't know. It's, uh, it's, there's still boats on the lakes that yeah. you can take passengers, but it's only fanatics. So, yeah. uh, they belong to a society, you know. Yeah. That they, they spend all their time on the lakes. Yeah. It, it's yeah. not just for a... Because it's really a very restful kind of trip, to <laughs> location, it, unless you have bad weather. And then <laughs> one of those bad. boats isn't so good to be on when you have bad weather and seasick. You know, I've only taken the, I've took the Thousand Island cruise one time, really enjoyed that. And we've always been going to take a Muskoka cruise yeah. up there. And we waited for a boat to, uh, this summer, and the, the boat, the fellow that ran the boat got sick. He never came, we never got on it. It's unfortunate. I think the automobile, more than anything, killed I guess so. The automobile gave us a tremendous mobility and a, a individual choice of where we wanted to yeah. go, and, but we've lost a lot of other things. We like have. We lost that good train service we used to have, and uh, yeah. uh, our mails are much slower than they used to be, even though this is the age of the airplane, and yet <clears throat> a letter from Toronto to uh, St. Thomas doesn't get here as fast as it did a hundred years ago. That's exactly right. And I'm not running down the post office, it's just a matter of uh, the uh, uh, the train service and uh, the handling isn't what it was a hundred years ago. Yeah, that's right. Well, this let's get the... back to boats instead of uh, philosophizing here. Yeah, this is the uh, city of St. Ignace, I believe. No. Boat that went from uh, Cleveland to Port Stanley and it an is another large boat went across in the 20s, in the teens and the 20s. Yeah. Well, how many times a week would those boats come across? Do you have any idea of uh, 
How many trips? Every other day, I believe. Every other day. I believe every other day they, they went across. Must have been great to go over to Cleveland for ball games, eh? Yeah, it was. But you see, there, there would be a hundred people from here going across to Cleveland, and there would be 500 on the weekend would come yep. from Cleveland. Yep. Over, and maybe six or seven hundred yeah. would come from Cleveland over to Port Stanley. Yeah. Port Stanley was a great amusement uh, center yeah. in those days. Yeah. They didn't have it in Cleveland no. at that time. And uh, You know, in the 1870s, when they got sailing ships still, uh, and, well, some of the first of the uh, steamship, uh, they'd uh, collect people at port, and they'd go up to Turconnell mm -hmm. or Eagle, where there were docks at both of those, and then they'd go over to Cleveland. And then they'd come back and drop people off at Turconnell Eagle and then at Port. Oh, I didn't know anything about that. Yeah, well, that was the service. It um, wasn't, wasn't a regular service, but that was kind of an excursion they'd have. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, somebody would organize an excursion. It would be a like thrilling that. thing in yeah. those days, I assume. But, you know, you must have had to get up at St. Thomas about 3 o'clock in the morning, and go down to Port, and you get on the boat, and then they make their way to Eagle or Turconnell and pick yeah. up more passengers, then across to Cleveland. You have a few hours there, and then yeah. you come back uh, late at night, you know, and uh, pull into Eagle or Turconnell and then to Port, and then have the LMPS uh, pull you up to St. Thomas. <laughs> I know the, the Masonic Lodges in London yeah. would go from London, take an, an yeah. LMPS car from London, and come, this is in the 1860s. Yes, oh yes. And they would come down to Port Stanley and pick up the, the Port Stanley yeah. members, and they would get on a boat, and they'd go across to Cleveland and yeah. come back in the same yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, it was a, a heck of a thing. No, it was marvelous uh, connection, really, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it really, really was. was. This is the Vigilant era. It's on the uh, west side of the harbor in the elevator there. The Vigilant was a patrol boat, the government patrol boat, that uh, mainly looked after fishing rights and to make sure that the Americans didn't encroach on the waters in the Canadian areas. And there were a succession of different boats down there. The Vigilant was probably the most famous patrol boat. That well, was did it ever have anything to do with the rum running? Yeah, I believe they did. Maybe not the Vigilant, because the Vigilant was before that. No. But there were the Petrel was one, and yes, I think they did. Well, we're, we're, listen, tell me, Don, when, when they were running, uh, this is in the Prohibition days in the States, uh, when they were running booze across to the United States, where did they get the booze from for, uh, say, at Port Stanley or St. Thomas? Well, they must, I think there were... Uh, I think Mackenzie King uh, said that, uh, you know, the Americans were always asking them about uh, doing something to help them fight off this rum running. And uh, I think what you could do, you could say buy from the Hiram Walker Distillery at Windsor. Mm -hmm. Now, there's nothing wrong with buying it. And then you bought it and you were going to consign it to Siam or someplace like that, <laughs> South Africa. And then uh, the government made no attempt to check on that. And then you got it to Port Stanley and you loaded it on a boat and you ran it across the lake. Right? Yeah. Yeah, they were making it here in Canada legally at that oh, time. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, prohibition had st ceased in Canada, yeah. I think, in 1926. Yeah. Uh, but it was still on the uh, states until the 34. That's right. Yeah, Roosevelt. And uh, it was those uh, the, those particular years in there that it yeah, was going yeah, on. Yeah. And uh, I know a lot of booze went out of Port Stanley. Yeah. An awful lot went out of there. And uh, there's uh, there's people around today that could tell you some pretty good stories about. Uh, yeah. Well, somebody should get them to do that. Well, I don't. They. I said they could. I'm not saying they no, will. No, I know they won't. I, I, I really don't think they will. But. Maybe another generation from now you'll be glad to brag that your grandfather was a rum runner out of ports. So, so far the ones today yeah. haven't got to that point. <laughs> if you read some of the papers in the 30s of the people that got caught, they're they're later prominent people oh, around London and oh, St. Thomas. Yeah. One of them that was involved in the a rather scandalous affair in a bootleggers in London was uh, later mayor of Toronto. Was he? And a famous mayor of Toronto, too. Yeah. <laughs> it was in a paper in 1933. I just yeah. came across it the other day. Uh, this is the ill fated Bessemer that sunk in 1909. And this postcard, again, is a later date, but that's the one that uh, was lost in the mysterious, mysterious uh, surroundings that uh, went on and they found it in different locations from all the way from Fort Erie to uh, Rondo, Well, I, I uh, uh, Prothero, you know, I, I think they, they felt that that boat uh, 
the storm was so bad they couldn't gamble on getting in that narrow harbor entrance. Eh? Yeah. So they ran for Rondo first. The, I suppose they wanted to get shelter there. <clears throat> and then they must have turned around and tried to run back to make Long Point. Uh, because somebody did see them on the bank, eh? you know, they're they heard the, they and heard, they heard the whistle. They heard it. I yeah. don't know if they saw it. Well, I think there's uh, uh, that, and then uh, so it sank somewhere between Port Stanley and Long Point. Well, I don't know where it sank. They haven't found no. it yet. Well, uh, somebody thinks they. No, have. they don't. That's not it. How do you know? That's definitely not it. Have you heard anything more since they went down? No, but no I would work. think that they'd operate in secrecy for a long time if that was it. No, they, it wasn't it. Uh, it they, they know what boat that was, yeah, and it wasn't yeah. the it yeah. wasn't the Bessemer. Well, the, where the lifeboats turned up, like uh, yes, the lifeboats did show up with bodies in them. Yes, I know. I, uh, and knives. Yeah. They had a lot of butcher knives. Well, <laughs> just to add to the mystery. Yeah. Well, I think people, uh, maybe the cook ran out with all his butcher knives. I remember, <laughs> I remember a fire in a prairie town, and the, uh, the uh, Chinaman who ran the restaurant there, when the place caught in fire, he ran out with a big cake in his hand. That's all he <laughs> saved. He didn't save his money or anything else, you know. There's so, a lot of money on this boat, apparently, too. Uh, supposedly, $50, yeah. $50,000 yeah. in cash and so but on. But you see, it's... Uh, uh, you look at all those boats that go back and forth to uh, Cleveland, you never think of the danger of it, and then every once in a while something happens, like that Fitzgerald that disappeared a yeah. few years ago. And it's a tricky life sailing the lakes. Yeah. Now this is the slip dock at the end of the railway line, mm -hmm. and this is where the boats would come in <clears throat> and take off their cargo. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't know whether, how clear it is, but at the right-hand side there's a boat in there right now at the yeah. slip. Yeah. And uh, the tracks was right over top of the water. I guess yep. you remember the tracks down no, there. No, I don't remember that don't you? either. No. Oh, well, that, that that hasn't been gone too long, but the tracks went right into the water, yep. or just above the water, and they could be adjusted mm -hmm. to the height of the boat. Yep. And then the trains would run right onto yep. the tracks, uh, on or off. Whichever yeah, the the, uh, the engine that was <clears throat> backing in to hook up always had to have a car on the back of it to. Uh, get in a couple with the first car in the boat. Oh, they did? Yeah. Uh, there's an engine in this picture here, yeah. if you could see it. It's, yeah. it's really a good picture of the slip dock. I learned to slip, swim down there at the end of the slip. Mm -hmm. There's another aerial view in the 30s, and uh, it shows the, uh, the uh, oil tanks in the foreground there. We're looking west along the white strip as Cavell Boulevard, mm -hmm. and uh, the Stork Club is visible in the top of the picture there too. Uh, about the mid 30s, the oil tanks went in in the yep. 31 or 32. And this is a view from the pier of the lake, or of the beach I mean. Mm -hmm. It shows the old casino there in the middle of the picture. That's the old Hopkins casino. The old Hopkins yeah. casino. There's a better mm -hmm. picture of it there. I have several pictures of this casino. Uh, Port Stanley's popularity is due mainly to the Erie Amusement Company, and to one man in particular, Jim Hopkins, who was a St. Thomas photographer, uh, a very successful photographer yeah. here, and an excellent photographer. He was a brother-in-law of T.H. Scott, yeah. of Scott Studios, which is still in existence today. And uh, he, whether he tired of uh, the photography business or just what, you live in his house, by the way, George. Yeah, I know I do, yeah. Uh, and uh, whether he tired of the photography business, uh, I don't know, but he certainly put all he had into Port Stanley from 1909 until he died. Died, I think, in 1927, 26 or 27. And uh, he is responsible mainly for the success of the entertainment side, or the pleasure side. Now, his casino was the first casino, wasn't it? It was the first yeah, one down it's there. a yeah. long time before the Stork Club. Yeah, it was built in 1909. The Stork Club was built in 1926. Yeah. And uh, it was enlarged five times over the years, the Hopkins Casino. This is the original casino here, built in 1909. And uh, there's another view. That is a picture uh, on July the 1st, taken by Hopkins, of the casino. It's an excellent picture, a really a fine picture. Uh, July the 1st, what year? 1909. 1909. And it yeah. opened just slightly before that, maybe a few days before that. This was the very first 
of the Hopkins Casino. And the popularity is unbelievable, the people that it brought to Port Stanley. And because of that, the booth started up, uh, popcorn, taffy yeah, apples, yeah. ice cream, and so on. A photographer was along yeah. there, and the boardwalk was yeah. down. Uh, there's another view of Hopkins Casino. Now that's a kind of elegant casino because uh, the ground floor was really open, so it if was it open. was raining, you had some shelter in there. Yeah, right? that's exactly what it was, yeah. a shelter. Yeah. And it, there was a restaurant down there. Oh, yeah. But it was much too small and it had to be enlarged over the years. This is still in 1909, the first year. Now there's the enlarged casino. Oh, yeah. First enlargement out nearly to the water there. And... Uh, then it was uh, gradually, this is the final casino. This is yeah. the way it was the day it burned. It burned in April 1932. Mm. And uh, it was popular right up until the last couple of years. It was mm. still in, it was the largest ballroom, summer ballroom in Canada until a store club was built. Oh, yeah. We had the two largest ballrooms mm. in Canada there. And they both did a splendid business. Even after the store club was built, uh, this uh, this ballroom was still on a Wednesday evening in the summer had 1,800 people on the floor at the last dance. And that's after the store club was competing. There's an interior view of the casino. It had a, a, a very fine floor. And one of the differences, one of the big differences to the patrons of the store club and of the, of the casino, uh, the casino didn't turn the lights off when the dancing took place, oh. and the store club did. This appealed to the younger people. The lights, lights being off. Lights off when the dance <clears throat> was on. Uh, by and large, in the first years, the... Uh, My mother had never let me put the lights out on. She was, <laughs> I don't blame her, George. But, uh, in the first years of the Stork Club, it was mostly London people that patronized it. Mm -hmm. This being operated by a St. Thomas man, it was supported by the local paper, almost to the exclusion of the uh, Stork Club. Yeah. Uh, it uh, was supported but mostly by St. Thomas people. Mm -hmm. And they were quite faithful to it, to yeah. the end almost, to Jim Hopkins, although Hopkins gave up managing it uh, uh, about 1925 or six. His son took it over for a while, yeah. and then it went to other hands. It's kind of interesting, isn't it, because the city of London took over the LNPSA and electrified it. Yes. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, I guess perhaps they weren't making that much money, although it was pretty prosperous carrying people, but uh, that's why they built the Stork Club, wasn't it? They oh, felt yes. that that would add to their income. And um, It was really you know. built as much uh, as a dance hall, as a shelter. It was a shelter. It was the, a pavilion, but a shelter. The downstairs yeah. was a shelter for yeah. people. Yeah. And I don't think they, they really envisioned how great the Stork Club was going to become. It didn't cost that much money to build it in those days. This See, place is where Guy Lombardo uh, jumped from he had been going for several years but it was from here he left and went to the state yeah now we've been talking about both this is hopkins casino where uh this lombardo is, started and then it. went to cleveland that's right yeah that's right there's lombardo there in later years this is his band taken in port stanley before he left in 1923 he did the whole summer and by that every night of the week yeah. and a band concert on Sundays. You know, it's kind of amazing, and we, we forget uh, that uh, in those uh, early 1900s, and I suppose up until the 1930s, you could get five to 10,000 people in port on a day, eh? Five to 10,000? Yes, or more. Uh, uh, 20,000 someday. Well, uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, now, if you take them in by private automobile, as we do today, you just couldn't get them there. Eh? Yeah, but, uh, but I, uh, with I, the IPS, you could. I, I remember myself when the, the cars couldn't park in Port Stanley, they had to park up by the church. They were yeah, parking at yeah. the church and walking down to the beach. Yeah. It, it, you know, the, the dances down there sometimes had 7,000 plus people. Yeah, I, uh, uh, that's another thing that changed, mm -hmm. that uh, big band era that did come in when the Stork Club became famous. Uh, uh, and then they had a dance every other night anyway, didn't they? Every night. Every night they had every a dance. Every night, and uh, a band concert on Sunday. Every <laughs> night of the week. Yeah. This is an ad of the uh, casino uh, advertising Guy Lombardo in the summer of 1923. Yeah. He could have come back in 1924, 
but uh, he didn't. Yeah. This is, uh, now I've got some ads here of uh, Alfonso Trent was a famous orchestra from, it was a black orchestra from uh, Detroit. And uh, they uh, came to uh, the casino and they were a very, very famous orchestra at that time. They were on WJR, the radio station there. And this is an advertisement for a midnight frolic on the 1st of July, 1929 and at the casino. This is after the Star Club had started. But this was a, a, quite a coup to get this Alfonso Trent and his black aces. Mm -hmm. They were running this midnight dance, starting at midnight and running until five in the morning. But it was against the uh, bylaw of the village to do this. <laughs> and at the last minute, the police came. Two policemen came. Constable Gilbert, I know, was there. And two policemen came and told the people that there would be no dance or the proprietors and the band would be arrested. And as a result, over 4,000 people were turned away that night from that. If they tried to do that now, they'd have a riot. I'm they'd afraid. have a real riot. Yeah. And, two, and there was no problem at all. No. They left quietly, and yeah. that was it. Yeah. But uh, that was the beginning of the end of the uh, casino. Yeah. For some reason, that uh, the casino never came back. This is out in front of the casino, this uh, view. It was... Uh, now, uh, when, I wonder when that pier disappeared entirely. Well, I remember the piling. Do? I don't remember the pier, but I do remember the piling was there when I was a kid. It was sticking up out of the water. So I, I should think it was there until 19, the late 20s or early 30s. Uh, there was a, an excursion boat would come in there and take people out in the lake. And at night, there was a, a boat took people out on a moonlight excursion and dancing out on the, the lake. Anything to make some money. That's the newspaper where uh, the, the casino burned in uh, April 1932. You could see the flames from Cleveland, uh, the, the reflection of the flames in Cleveland, and people were phoning up Fort Stanley wanting to know what the uh, fire was over in Fort Stanley. This is the Orion, uh, the Orion uh, Hotel at Port. Uh, it's still standing yeah. today. It doesn't look quite as elegant as that, but uh, oh. it was a very popular place with American tourists, too. Now, this the casino, I should have mentioned, was at the foot of William Street, yeah. right down below, south of the Lakeside Hotel today. And this is William Street, uh, about 1915, looking south down uh, William Street. And this is a more recent uh, vintage in the mid-30s looking down William Street to the beach. This is a view, this picture was taken by Jim Hopkins too in 1909. It's looking towards the uh, pier eastward along the beach. It's a, it's a very excellent picture too, very it clear. Is. Yes. Don, we have five minutes. Okay. All right. What do you, what do you want to? No, just. Uh, we, we can't do much here. other no, than No, I don't go. think so. This is just uh, some gay 90 attire. Uh, bathing suits when the girls put more clothes on than they usually wore in the streets. Yeah, they look more sexy than they do today <laughs> think very so. often. Maybe I'm just old, I don't know. Yeah. Those must have been awfully uncomfortable <laughs> swimsuits. Like, you come in out of the water terrible. and yeah. feel like a dead fish. Yeah. This is a seaplane. Uh, it went and swung people around, had a motor on it, swung people around, dipped their feet in the water. Kind of fun. This is a slide they had. Somewhere around Ma in front of Mackey's. Looks like a lot of fun, really. Well, now, the, who supplied those slides? There's no charge. They're no, just... I, I, I should imagine the Erie Amusement Company. Ah, yeah. I don't know. I don't think there would be any charge yeah. for that. I don't. This was a picture taken in the 90s, maybe about 1890 that this was taken, down on the beach down at Port. Uh, this is down further. Uh, Looking eastward, you can see on the left side the old swimming pool. Oh, yeah. The swimming pool wasn't built until 1934, and it was gone by 1940. It's just filled up with it's, sand. Yes, it's not gone. It's just there, it's yeah. filled up with sand. It's still there. Yeah, maybe 100 years from now, somebody will make a big archaeological discovery, <laughs> discover the swimming pool of Port Stanley. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's another uh, view of the boardwalk. Yeah looking from uh, about the bathhouse down towards the large building in the background is the casino. The Hopkins Casino. Hopkins yeah. Casino, yeah. This is a probably about 1920. Yeah. This, it's a good picture, good clear one. 
And this is about 1930, just after the boardwalk was replaced by cement. Yeah. There's Mackey's on the left there. And the casino in the background. Yeah. So the casino burned in 32. This is probably the summer of 31. Two minutes, George. Yeah, all right. Well, can we get to maybe a couple of shots of the Stork Club? Gosh, I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter if we don't. There's, there's, uh, no, we can't. No, all right, okay. There, there's the boardwalk there, about 1935. Uh, and there's looking the other way, westward, from uh, the beach, before the Stork Club was built. This is right through the area where the Stork Club later stood. There's the roller coaster yeah. at the foot of the incline railway. The incline railway is gone now. This is the first time I've shown these since the railway has been gone. This is the end of the LMPS, end of the line. And there's the LMPS coming into the beach station. There's the incline railway. How are we doing for time? Well, I haven't got the signal to wind it up yet. But why do I have one minute? Yeah. There's an older picture of the Incline Railway showing the Fraser House. Oh, that's a nice picture of the Fraser House. House. This is an old picture. This yes. is uh, at least 1890 yeah. or prior. And that doesn't show up too good. That's a picture taken in 1897, uh, the year that the railway was extended. Oh, yeah. Down at the foot of the hill. You, the Incline Railway is in that picture, too. Now listen, There's, maybe we'll just stop there. That's the... Observation Tower. Of the Fraser? Yeah. On the Fraser House that yeah. overlooked. Don, I'm sorry we, we, ran out of, we have run out of time. And uh, I'd like to remind the people who are watching that this program will be repeated on Friday at uh, October the 10th at 8 p.m. and on Wednesday, October the 15th at 8 p.m. And uh, uh, Don, thank you very, very much for uh, uh, giving us all your background and these wonderful slides of Port Stanley. And thank you very much for watching the program, and good night. Thank you, George.